and I knew I was going to see him and it would be completely platonic and I have no desire to be any sort of like home wrecker yeah right that being said, I'm like, I'm getting a spray tan. Like, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm shaving my so pussy. Like, yeah, like, exactly. I- what is up, guys? Welcome back to Gin and Toxic. I'm Christina. I'm Lily. And I'm Talia. Yay, Woo, another we, guest. Another <laughs> guest. This is like a like a third different room too that we've recorded in yeah we've recorded in a different room for every guest honestly it wasn't even really intentional but i think this is beautiful this yeah room. <laughs> it is it is kind of really gorgeous i think it represents me too it's like dark and scary <laughs> and we like love it right <laughs> <laughs> i love it so yeah guys we have talia here with us today we are so hyped i'm taking my shoes off because i'm throwing my feet up on the couch but um yeah no we have talia with us here today to talk about life and spreading negativity and all that yeah. fun stuff <laughs> yeah but spreading of negativity. course yeah it's spreading <laughs> negativity complete contrast from uh sophia episode. yes yeah. so absolutely hilarious we're but changing she's it up best. she's the best she's the best we you guys are talking, both the best so. i can't believe i met sophia she told me like oh i love your co- your content i love your stuff i'm like well, you, why you, you do yeah <laughs> she is so positive so positive so Painfully kind and positive. sweet yeah. and bubbly i'm like the best i couldn't believe yeah, yeah. she's the best she's great <laughs> she was so funny yesterday i but... would say something negative and she'd be like no and i'm like no yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah actually. she would like, like go she'd be like oh my god like i don't want to sound mean and we were like mm. have you listened to Janet talks <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like, like we'd be talking shit yeah <laughs> like all the time i like yeah. that i like that well anyways we're gonna hop right in to toxic things of the week now guys listen as you know once again the third episode this is the recorded. third episode like in, in 24 four, hours yeah, in 24 hours literally third episode in 24 hours that we have recorded we already gave you guys the gist of the pre-recording actually this episode is going to be the last episode that goes up before we go back to our normal schedule hey, okay so which is great so the next episode you guys hear after this will be in real time but um because we recorded three episodes within 24 hours me and Lily are a little we're a little stuck we're a little I, stuck I didn't get on a our chance toxic to get thing drunk of the week. again so yeah we didn't that's get a chance always my toxic thing last of the week, night Sophia, the when we were recording last night Sophia's like we gotta go out should we go on Saturday should we go out tonight yeah yeah <laughs> she was like let's go out tonight and I was like whoa okay we were like I mean we're young you're supposed to right don't worry I will oh yeah we will if there's one thing Lily will do it is blackout during the week 100% yeah but yeah so we're a little stuck so we're gonna let you kick it off yeah okay. you know what have you done recently that's toxic toxic thing of the week and you know well i have an ego problem as okay. most okay. people do but will lie about it but i'm very proud of my ego and it really okay. is a big part of my life wait what's your zodiac capricorn oh my god oh, yeah <laughs> sophia was yesterday too yeah, really oh, mm-hmm. do you know like your big three yeah my mom taught me she's really into this stuff really i'm a capricorn sun okay i'm a taurus rising Okay. And I'm a Pisces moon. Okay. Love it. I don't that, know much about Pisces. Good? Yeah, honestly, I don't know like too much about like Pisces or I know a little bit about Capricorn because I'm a Capricorn moon, but Capricorns, I don't know what it would mean honestly for like your sun, but Capricorns have a very like nurturing nature too. Oh, good. Yeah, good. they have like, I a don't, very I don't like I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, they tend surprise. to be like I'm um, like not nurturing, but like could tend to like sometimes be kind of motherly around like their friends. That's oh, if that makes sense. Because yeah. I am not motherly in general. Like okay. the <laughs> idea of kids like actually makes me want to vomit. Oh, no, me too. I that's nice to. Do know. you want kids? No, absolutely. No. Not. I do not. She <laughs> on the other hand, I was like, I'll take care of your kids. Really? Whatever. Okay. Yeah, I cannot. But anyways, go I on. like kids. Yeah. Just I don't want my own. But anyway, right. I'll watch every everybody yeah. else. I love. <laughs> I love to be like a great like a cool aunt. Or I want right. to be the cool aunt. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Um. Okay. So toxic. So my ego. My ego. Yes, your ego. So. I have, as we all do, we have like an ex who is like, you're like, I'm friends with him. We're, we have a great relationship. We yeah. never had a falling out. It yeah. It's just like, I moved here and he's there. Yeah. But I will always want to be wanted by my exes. Like, oh, yeah. Like, you have to be the one who got away. Like, you yeah. can't. Oh, you, I will not like. I, so I, I went home to visit my family. Like, I went home for like two weeks to LA. And I new in my mind this guy has a new girlfriend he oh tells boy. me about her i'm like this is great good for you and i knew i was gonna see him and it would be completely platonic and i have no desire to be any sort of like home wrecker yeah right. 
that being said, I'm like, I'm getting a spray tan. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna shaving look my so pussy. Good. Like, yeah, like, exactly. I, I would never let him touch oh me. He, he would right. never cheat. He wouldn't. But I'm like, I'm, I I'm, have I to look to amazing. Look oh no, absolutely. Good. So obviously I hung out with him like a bunch over the break. And I just like, it was very clear that uh-huh. I accomplished my mission of being like, oh he, yeah he totally missed me like it was it felt so fucking good there was yeah. nothing that fed my ego more in addition to that this week I also have this special close friends story um I have like my clo- my actual close friends like from home like probably yeah. five, of p- five people that are just constantly on it women like okay. my good girlfriends but I rotate I also have like my manager and stuff on it like yeah, whatever yeah. it's like I want him to like make sure that I don't do anything that could be like I, he has to yeah. watch what I'm doing oh yeah other than that I just add guys that I'm into like yeah. oh yeah on like a rotation <laughs> Make feel and I just like add them there drop like a really hot photo once in a while oh, that yeah. time I'll like take my manager off it or like take whatever who else is on it that's gonna judge <laughs> me for it but I always put like it's like just one guy on exactly. it yeah, yeah. Like, anytime I like guy. a guy I put him on my close friend story and usually they'll dm me and be like oh I'm on your close friends like that's just so that I could post a thirst trap right. does the you could I was gonna say, I literally just did that the other day because uh did you see that Lizzo put out like a new shapewear line called Yitty yes yeah, so yeah. Yitty was like created by Fabletics and I'm like a Fabletics ambassador I've been working with them for like three years so they sent me the collection and wanted me to like promote it and make instagram stories with it and stuff and so i pre-recorded the instagram stories the other day but a lot of the shapewear was like these like shaping like thongs and so i posted like a sneak preview yeah it's like a sneak preview and it's literally just a video that (laughs) it looks like it's like my bare ass and i put it on my close friend story with like the like mindset of like i really hope this like one guy particular like sees it she she did like all her guy friends it's literally just the girls and like the the girls and the gays and the guys and it rotates too and sometimes guys Guys, like Rotates. from my past will notice like oh it doesn't say green anymore when I follow you like I'm not on your close friends and like you're done yeah you don't need to see that anymore it's all just like me ranting about oh work my shit God, and my nudes tell. basically yeah I didn't know people that people can, could tell if so if you look on I somebody's profile about. oh wait no 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 I'm pretty sure that's for I can't tell if it's real no, or not I only one person's right. ever brought this up but I think they saw it like on my phone I don't know if they can see it from their phone I just know okay. when I go and see somebody who is on my close friend's story, it says green when I'm yeah, following yeah. them. But I don't know if that means that I'm on theirs too. No, I no, think I, I think, think that's so. only like from your phone. Okay, I yeah. think somebody saw on oh my, my phone God. That it wasn't green. But I they were like, "You're panic. not. I'm not on your close friends." Or somebody heard about my close friend's story and yeah. saw yeah, that they weren't yeah, yeah. on it. I was like, "You're not on it because you maybe are no like longer, you. Yeah. you don't need it anymore. I don't you don't need, need to be to on see it, it anymore. Babe, you're not. It's okay. You're yeah. not missing anything. Yeah, exactly. You didn't make the cut anymore. You don't make the cut for my nudes and stuff. anymore. Right. Yeah. I sometimes like I'll like take a guy off if I want to talk about like a different guy. If I'm like, oh my god, I have a crush on this one guy. I'll talk about him, and then when it expires, I'll add the other. Guy back. I'll do something <laughs> really fucked up. Yeah. I'll like a guy and then I'll like have another guy that I talk about and I'll say on the close friend story, like, oh my crush, like I'm really into yeah, this. Yeah, and then they don't I'll know who make it is. him up. Yeah. And then the guy yeah. who's watching my story, who's actually my crush, is like, is it me? Like, what's going right. on? Right. Like, uh, I love uh, to make people jealous. Oh my I god. I do it on my podcast all the time. I talk about guys that didn't exist. Like, oh I my god, yeah. Love people. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I used to. Oh my god! I, there's this one guy, the Palestinian prince. That we, we have talk about. Yeah, we have. Nicknames. Okay, so I every guy it. that I talk to, we have a nickname for. Oh on yeah, the show. yeah, same, we have same, same. Of so course. many nicknames. Of course, Palestinian prince. Though he's like one of my like fuck buddies, and he every time he's on my close friends, and every time I post something about like a different guy or I talk about a guy on the podcast or something, he always DMs me, and he's always. like, "Who's this guy?" Who's the guy? Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 like whatever. Like mm-hmm. he wants me. Like not even like oh I want you to only fuck me. Like you are only fucking me. That's hot. It is really even hot. if you're like not following that rule and you don't like him that much. Yeah. Oh my god. Hot. I don't follow the rule. But no. Of course not. <laughs> I'm also transparent about it too. Like he, yeah, knows, he knows that I fuck other knows. people. Right. Of course. He's still gonna say that. But of he course. knows I fuck other people. That's great. So. That's excellent. Exactly. Yeah. That's what you want. See, there's our toxic thing of the week. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. we go. Because I literally just did that the close friends thing like yeah. maybe three days That's ago. Genius. I do that without even really thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. And then I, I did throw in a little flirt. Remember I told you when he texted me, the guy when he texted me about my like story of me and like the thong and everything, uh, we were he like messaged me on Instagram about it and then he was texting me about it or something like that. I forget how it was brought up, but then I threw in like a little flirty comment and I was like, would it be fucked up to say that I'm glad you saw it? And he yeah, was like, yeah, 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 that's cute. He was like, ooh, 
<laughs> you yeah. have to you have to acknowledge that you know you didn't add them by accident to your story. You know right. that they're looking. Yeah. yeah. Just it's I hope you're getting ideas, people. Guys like, right. that shit up. <laughs> they love feeling like they were added. Like the close friend story is a big yeah. deal to a guy because he's like, I'm she trusts me. Like I'm in on the yeah. side of her life. She feels yeah. like safe with her like with her friends or yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm in her inner circle. I don't think they, yeah. they interpret it as like a friend zone. They take no, it as like, no, oh yeah. Wow, she no, absolutely. Me. She's trying to fuck. Yeah, That's exactly. She is trying and they don't know that they're coming off like next Tuesday. They're not right. really <laughs> on it anymore. But <laughs> right. whatever. You made the they roster know, and now they don't you know, know the rotation. But exactly. 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 I put exactly. also, you were saying sometimes you put your manager on it. I have my life coach on my close friends because oh, I'm good. my close friends. Sometimes I will literally post like my mental breakdowns. So if I post it on my close friends, my life coach sees it. And then on her next session, she's like, what was that about? Right. What was that post about on, you know, Wednesday? Day at 10 p.m. What, what's going on? You're there? like, oh, so she I'm knows fine now. everything. I'm fine now. Okay, well, it's good. Yeah. Then she can remind you. What to, I I had a therapist for like a second, and the issue was that I never remembered what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh I my god! I didn't have like a specific thing that I was working on. But the manager, I do have an issue with. Bleed. Maybe I need a life coach because I bleed. He bleeds oh my into God, like being should. a life coach for me. Like sometimes he, my manager does too. Honestly. I I really <laughs> tell him far too much. Like it's oh, really yeah. bad, and he tells me too much too. Like I'm so curious about his life. Oh my I God, can't my accept that he too. has like boundaries. Yeah, that I like don't yeah. need to I know. know. My manager is like <laughs> best friends with one of my best friends over at Warner and. I didn't even know that. Well, he told me that he was like proposing to his girlfriend the <gasps> weekend that he was, but he never told me when the wedding was. And then all of a sudden I'm with my friend and she like goes on her Instagram feed and she's like, oh my God, she was like, Brian got married. <gasps> and I was like, Brian got married. What? Goes, little slut. He didn't tell me. Oh, who did like, not he didn't tell know. me. All of a sudden just whips you up have him been and invited. his wife. Yeah. I know. All of a sudden he just whips up my friend, Jen. She just whips up his wedding photos. It was honestly so cute because his wife, his now wife, is a wedding planner. Oh, That's cute. like what she does for a living. Anyway, so they had like an adult bouncy house. <gasps> she wore like a cute white cocktail I love dress. Fun activities. Yeah. They yeah. had one of those like In and Out Burger trucks right. cater. It was like, oh my God, it was so cute. But still, I texted him and I was like, um, I'd be furious. Me. I'd be furious. When, yeah. If my manager got a girlfriend. Your whole husband. If like, he got a girlfriend. And didn't tell you. I'd be furious. But all, well, I always ask him, like, so what's new with the girls? Like, yeah. do you want any dates, whatever? As if, like, I really do want to know. But actually, if he told me that he was seeing somebody, I'd be like, well, then you can't focus on me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What? The oh, fuck? That's you can't have me. another woman in your life. Yeah. Like yeah. I am the one <laughs> yeah. that you need to be worried about. Yes. So right. it would bug me actually. Oh so. my god. Well, but. I met his girlfriend before. Like they were only dating for like a month, and I was doing a live show in LA. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I've been dating this girl for like a month or whatever, but I'm gonna bring her to your live show. And I was like, All right, sounds great. And the entire time in the show, I like told like the audience like ahead of time that my manager is bringing his girlfriend. They only been dating for a month like to, that I'm gonna be like fucking with him the, like the entire right. show yeah. and so I'd be like on stage and I'd be like oh my god like does anybody smell that and I'd be like oh it's just Brian like ew like, <laughs> put some deodorant. like stupid shit that like I don't even know I would just like I was just like messing with them the entire show right. to like try As and like fuck with him and the girlfriend and everything and she was so sweet yeah and then they they got engaged really fast I mean quarantine so many people got engaged so quick like so Babies fast left and right, right. yeah what Babies. the fuck was up with getting that? married divorce breakups I was, I, I was depressed was and laying up. in bed yeah. like well, I that's know. the way to do it I feel like the quarantine <laughs> relationships either they were so codependent and weird and you spent so much time together that it yeah. turned into an unhealthy thing. Yeah. Or you broke up. Like, you're not supposed uh -huh. to spend that much time with anybody. I would no. not want to mm -mm. get into a relationship during that time and I don't no. trust anybody who exactly. did. Exactly. That's why, you know what? When I dated... Okay, New, New York, York, everybody. <laughs> when I was dating, so we'll talk in a sec about how me and Talia met. Yes. Um, but when I was on stage updating the guy that I dated and everything, the boy band... We dated for four years and that entire four years was a long distance relationship. And then when I got into a relationship after that in New York and my boyfriend at the time like wanted to see me like all the time or every other day. Yeah, it was like a like, lot no. for me. Right. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm so not used right. to this. And I was like, I need my space. And then I was like, I was like, I don't know how people do this. No, like I can't like it's a huge adjustment. Yeah, it was. Sure. Yeah, it was a huge adjustment. Like I went from like not seeing my boyfriend for, you know, three weeks 
weeks at a time to seeing a new boyfriend like every day or every other day and I was mm-hmm. like okay like I can't I can't do this I actually preferred in that moment I was like damn like maybe I, I am meant for distance. a long distance relationship just because right. I also like I work so much well, you know my dream relationship is with a firefighter because they're <laughs> at the firehouse yes. so many so days of the week they yeah. sleep with and her. there's such a masculine energy that men need to expel like they need I think they really need to like do gross shit and like be with the guys and not like be emotional and whatever and intimate like they need to like just be a dude yeah and the men can go and like do that go be dirty go make a mess right yeah. go like wear gross clothes and like yeah make gross food and like whatever <laughs> watch your sports and three days and then they miss you yeah, yeah. and then they want to come home and, and be then it's soft better and fun yeah. and yeah. intimate and then like when you have a little time to miss each other yeah that's the dream relationship so exactly. i would love to have a husband who four days a week he's at home three days a week he goes to the firehouse yeah, yeah. wow that's also they're firemen so and they're fun. hot yeah so. oh they're also so many hot, firemen hot. hot. Yeah. yeah put out the, <laughs> the yeah. perfect the perfect man is a fireman wow i'm gonna think about that a lot now yeah, yeah. <laughs> i always take a good look when i when walk you by wa- the fire no, when you walk by i literally look at them and i'm like hi yeah 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 like come put out my fire cross i like i always walk by like flip my hair so how'd you guys meet (laughs) hopping right into it we thought that we would kick this off with how me and talia met because despite us both being influencers i guess we did not meet in a very typical influencer way. No, we didn't. We didn't. We really yeah. Didn't. Do you want to tell the story or Please. kick it off? Let's yeah. Do it. Well, there's this live show in New York City called Updating. Yes. We've you talked guys, about it on the show before. I'm sure they you know. Oh, you yeah. know all about it. Christina's <laughs> episodes went really viral. They, Hell they did yeah. really, really well. <laughs> but so I was on Updating and I was like the Christina. I was the star dater. Yeah. I was going to ask how you, we actually never discussed this, how you met Harrison and Brandon. They had me on the show. Okay. And they're trying to, I think they are trying to get more influencers in there. Oh, like yeah. It's getting them a totally. lot of publicity. So I was one of the bigger, like the first influencer that they had on the show. Yeah. And we really hit it off after that. Like the two of them and I became really close yeah. friends. They're like older brothers to me. Totally. And so that was back in January and we've just kept in touch ever since. Yeah. They give me a call two hours before you're going on stage. I yeah. was sitting in like a hair appointment getting my hair dyed. <laughs> and they say we need a second date or the whole reason that the show is interesting is because you yeah, have a first there's crashers date. Yes. yeah and then you have you have to bring somebody else on and give the guy or the girl an option yeah so it wasn't necessarily that i was they made it look like you know i was sitting in the audience and it came up there yeah, yeah, yeah. which is fine i was like do anything you need to do for That's the drama show biz, baby. it's all comedy <laughs> we yeah. love the drama it's all whatever but so they call and they're like we need somebody and also we just thought that this guy would make sense for you because yeah. he's like Tall Jewish, some Jewish man. Yeah. You're going to like him. And I go, great, I'm free tonight. Like, I'll, I literally went straight for my hair appointment. I went home, put on some, like, different pants. Like, I tried yeah. to, like, dress up a little bit. And I went while you were on stage. Like, I literally got there so late. Really? And I'm watching <laughs> them on stage. I'm like, they're hitting it off. Like, shit, there's yeah. going to be, like, <laughs> you know, I don't. I didn't go in there with any hope. I'm like, I'm just going to be here to provide yeah. the choice that exactly. needs yeah. to make. No expectations, of course. Yeah. He chooses you on stage. You guys hit it off. Also, it's kind of fucked up if they chose the second girl. Like, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I know. Well, nobody's I know ever that done that. Been, well, okay. So, my friend, TikTok King, uh, the guy we were telling you about before. Yeah. So, the whole reason I found out about updating was because he was on it, too. Oh, okay. Great. But he was on it as, like, the crasher, but right. the girl still picked him. Really? So, that was, that was a situation where the girl was picking and right. the girl picked the crasher. I, I picked would, I my picked first choice, too. who was also a TikToker. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. We're Are still you? friends. We, we ended up going home that night and, like, having sex. Really? But, <laughs> and it wow, was great. Okay. But I was like, I just didn't think, I didn't see it becoming like a. Yeah, like a long term. I didn't like him thing. like that. We still talk sometimes. I'm sort of like, okay, like, I got it. Like, we're, it's like, not, yeah, enough it's of that. that. It's enough not of that. that. It was sort of like, just it like would have been a great meet cute. It was but a like, good meet cute for that day. But yeah. like, come on, we have to be, do you really think it's going to be like a relationship? I don't think we're like that. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. But we are dear friends. But anyway, yeah, great. so I go on stage. He picks Christina, whatever. Everything is fine and dandy. And then we go to an after party. Christina and I yes. hit it off and find out we have similar jobs. Yeah. However, there's something you don't know. Oh. Okay, so basically. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Something I don't know. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. There's a lot you don't know. So, the Christina's videos go really viral, and yes. everyone because that you guys hit it off so well, people are shipping you guys. Yeah, and I became like the villain again. I, not a I problem. felt so bad. I was like reading the comments, and people were like, fuck. "Well, half of the comments were people being like, oh my god, that's a spread negativity,' girl,' and yeah. then the other half of the comments were like, um, they were like.'" 
<laughs> they're so mean some of them like get her off this thing, i know everyone was like fuck this girl you she's know what not I thought, the one you know what i thought though which was hilarious and i was like this is like oh she's a fucking team player you commented on one of them and you were like team christina I, who and was, I was like, like <laughs> you guys hit it off better like and also yeah. when i went on stage i'm like there's nothing to be said like i'm yeah. just like uh, it's not like love island babe. right like, yeah it's not people, that deep yeah they it's literally not that serious pay 25 bucks or whatever to go to the show and see the guy choose yeah they needed a choice i don't yeah. know why people were like mad it's not fun if That's you guys get on stage you have your date it goes great and then there's no conflict and then whatsoever. there's nothing like, yeah that's it so i they needed to create that suspense so yeah, yeah i became the villain but i was like happy to do yeah it. Like, it, i don't cares. give a fuck create the controversy so, baby yeah <laughs> i'm the villain that's fine so i'm just watching these videos but people started messaging me like aren't you mad that you didn't win you did blah 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 i'm here for my revenge to tell the real story i'm listening <laughs> the morning after this whole thing happens I, I open up my DM requests. Oh my God. And there's a DM from Harry. Harry. <gasps> oh, shit. No, it's not that juicy. It's not okay. like he was like, fuck Christina, I want you. No, 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 no. But he was like, you know, sorry we didn't get to, I don't even remember what he said. He was like, sorry I didn't get to like talk, but like, oh, I just noticed we matched on Hinge a while ago. <gasps> okay, wait. He told me this. I didn't remember this. Oh my God. Okay. And you so know what? I responded and like, oh my God, no way. And then I said something like, so were you happy with the choice? Like, how, I, I want to, how did it go? Did you guys go home together? I hadn't yeah, talked yeah, to you yeah. about it yet. He starts typing, <laughs> doesn't respond after that. He's like, we were messaging. Then he stops as soon as I ask that question. I'm like, he doesn't want to get himself in trouble. Wise, wise. So I'm like, peace. And then that was it. But everyone kept messaging me like, I bet you're Drama. upset that Harry did you. I'm like, Harry had this. You know, he floundered a second. Like, yeah. He, he did the DM. He but did. But he stayed true to his decision. Yeah. He, you know what? That's so funny that you say it. So after updating, we've been giving updates on this show too. So after updating, that night we didn't hang out. Mm -hmm. But the day after we went out, we got drinks, we got sushi. Cute. And then like a week and a half after that, I went to his apartment and he cooked for me. Really? And like made me a whole dinner. And when we I were at his apartment... I forget how it was brought up. I mean, probably just because updating was brought up at some right. point. And he said, he was like, yeah, like I didn't realize until after the show, but I actually matched with Talia on yes. Hinge like a while ago. And I neither of us <laughs> recognize each other. Yeah. I guess we just have bad photos That's on there. Like, so I had funny. no idea. I probably him. wouldn't recognize a guy. Yeah, I, I probably, yeah, I, when, I mean, there, I, oh my God, I would match with like so many guys on Hinge have like either no conversation or like maybe a five minute conversation exactly, and then yeah. never speak again. I would not be able to I never, out he to you. messaged me on Hinge. I never responded to him. I just, yeah. like, I match and I turn off the app. Like, yeah. I just forget about it. So, oh my God, that that's is how so Christina and I met. funny. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how we met. Yeah, because then we went to the we went to the bar after, mm -hmm. and I went up to you, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're so cool!" And you're like, "Oh my god, you're so cool!" And then we're like, "All right, great, so we're best friends now." Yeah, yeah. like so, yeah. She texted out. me Perfect. and was like, "You're never gonna guess who fucking crap." And I was like, "Who? <laughs> yeah, you're uh, never gonna guess who totally from my TikTok. TikTok." I was like, "Hell no yeah!" I was like, "That's so random, just like amazing." Because it was, you know what? When I got off the stage and you went on the stage, I heard your voice and everything. Didn't know who you were, whatever. Right, and then my roommate who was in the crowd texts me and she was like wait a minute I think this girl is famous on TikTok like the one that's on stage right now and I was like what she is and then like right before I was going back on stage she sends me a screenshot of your TikTok profile and she was like this is the girl that's on stage right now and I recognized you like right away and I was like you're fucking joking yeah. <laughs> so then I went on the stage and I saw you and I was like oh my god I was like what so the fuck funny. what are the odds literally before I was on well first of all I so I went to one of their shows on like a I think it was a Saturday night with Rob the yes. guy that was on stage with yes. us my friend Rob oh so he was on updating the following Wednesday after my show okay. and me and him went to the show a week before my show together just to like watch it and stuff because he had extra tickets and right. he knew he was going to be on at that show, I met Harrison and Brandon, and then like the next day, DM them on Instagram. Was like, I want to be on the show, and then Harrison on like Monday night DMs me back, and he's like, I'm gonna call you in the morning. What's your number? Calls me Tuesday morning. We talk on Facetime. He's like, I love you. I'm gonna pass you along to Brandon. Brandon calls me right after that. I'm on a Facetime call with Brandon. Brandon's like, All right, I love you. I'm gonna throw you on a Facetime call with the two of us. Right. And then I did like two or three more Facetime calls right. with them up until when we did the show like it's like a fucking like yeah. i thought they were just gonna be like yeah you're cool come on they're like no, no, very no. like p 
picky with who they have they on. I would be sure. too. Yeah, yeah, they need to put on a show. People are paying yeah. to see it. So of course they stage like they want to know at first if you can talk and if you yeah. can hold a conversation mm-hmm. and you're not going to get chickened out on stage and you're not going to be shy. Yeah. But then they have to see once they pick the guy, like, will you jive with the guy? Yeah. What kind of guy are you interested in? They don't want you to like hate the person. Yeah. So no, it's obviously it's not because you're influencers. It's because it yeah. is staged because it's entertainment. Um, yeah, exactly. They don't pick us for fan base, but like they do yeah, pick no. people. But they definitely obviously like, I mean, when I told them like right away, like, you know, they saw like my energy. They saw I was a podcaster. I'm sure they saw the same things about exactly. you. And they're like, all right, so they're energetic. They could talk and they're open books. Like, exactly. you know, that was like one of the things that they were like, is there anything that you won't talk about? And I was like, no, no. Yeah, exactly. And same that's like the type thing. of people that they need. That's what they want. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's how the night went. I was, oh my God, may I mention too that when I met you, I was drunk and I also had a lingering like cough from when I was getting over a cold. So I don't know if you remember, but I was trying to talk to you at the bar and I was like dying. Really? <laughs> I was like every other sentence I was putting out, I had like this tickle in my throat. And I'm like trying to power through it. I was like, she probably I've been there. So, it's like, so embarrassing. Up right it's, now. It's, worse. Such, it's so embarrassing. So humbling. It's so, it's so, so humbling. humbling. When you can't get a sentence out because you're going to cough. No, um, no, I didn't even notice that at all. But thanks for still talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I right. wouldn't have noticed anything at that point. Like, yeah. I was pretty oh gone. My God. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. We all were. Yeah. Oh my God. They were. Oh, who was it? Brandon that night was fucked up. Yeah. If he's watching it, because he watches the show now. Really? You're Brandon fucked up. Brandon and I like, <laughs> talked really to me for like an Brandon. hour. Brandon was like, we had like a deep talk, and I was like, I don't know if he's just like really feeling emotional tonight or yeah like, or if he's he, drunk it, it took me a second to realize because he seems so sober he's so good at like yeah the, oh yeah yeah, yeah. He, the lights were on but like nobody was home and right I didn't <laughs> know that and so I realized like oh he doesn't want to have a deep talk he's just fucked up yeah, yeah. I right. didn't even realize and oh my god we must have <laughs> talked for like 45 minutes where he's just giving me this like lecture on like this is what you need to do you need to stay true to yourself and your yeah. art <laughs> I'm like okay like whatever oh tell me about his god. he has this great girlfriend that he's like obsessed with oh my god yes I met her she's so sweet Mel so yeah. cute but she's, he's talking all about Mel I'm like I get it like you're yeah. in love like please drink the water like, <laughs> I know you're so please drink the water. we get it you're yeah. in love we're not well, like, I'm, so, I'm so glad you guys met I mean I this know this was perfect. perfect we were like saying I was like yeah that night I was like you have to come on Jenna Toxic and oh, you yeah. were like when oh, I yeah. get back I was hyped you know what's so funny too is you were like I'm going to message you at the uh, end of April to see like um, when I get back from L.A. to come on mm-hmm, the show. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I literally messaged you on May 1st. I was like, I probably look like a psycho. You're kidding. But <laughs> I was like, yeah, because we were it's just trying manager. to. Oh, no way. Do you want to answer? Yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Hi, I'm busy right now. What's up? OK, yeah. So let's hop right into your background. We want to hear just the basics. Where you're from. Where you're from. Did you go to you, college? Yeah. Anything, How'd you get here? Yes. Why'd you move to New York? Anything you feel is vital for the people to know about sure. your background. Yeah. OK, well, I'm from Los Angeles originally. Okay. I wouldn't have guessed that. Really? Yeah, I know. I, would I guess not have now that you that say really. L.A., but like that's a compliment. That's a you're huge, not like I take yeah. it as a huge compliment. Yeah, you're huge. not like overly like L.A. <laughs> Thank you. I really don't like L.A. Like the whole um geographically I don't like it I don't like the layout I don't like anything about it physically but I also don't like like the every other city is known for something the people have a defining characteristic they're Boston is like tough guys oh, yeah. and New York is tough guys but like right. LA is like where's my selfie stick like I hate yeah. that we're known for narcissism and yeah. materialism yeah. but anyway so no I don't feel like I'm LA but thanks for saying that but but I feel like that's more so for like the people that moved to LA like yeah. my friends that are like born and raised in LA yeah very are not really very like different. that yeah. no it's completely different but I'm I'm very proud to be from like LA proper. I'm not yeah. from the valley. I was from the city. So I did have like, I think it's people confuse it. They think it's like, I'm not, they see me in New York. They're like, oh, you fit in really well here. And it's because I'm from a city. Yeah, you're from right. So city. I'm, yeah, I'm from right. West Hollywood. Oh, wow. But, okay. um, wow so, so you're I, like right in it. Right in there. Yeah. Right in there. Right by the Grove is where I grew really? up. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So I'm from there. And then, you know, when I was 18, I went off to, I went to UC Berkeley up in Northern California. Mm. I studied like journalism and like media studies there. I, I was interested. I made videos like man on the street videos at school with the microphone. Really? But I really wanted to. I liked the idea of like mixing comedy and entertainment. Yeah. But I went into college thinking I'd be like a news anchor. Like I thought that I would do really? sitting behind a desk. Then it moved towards like more of a Kamau Bell, Lisa Lang, like reporting um, hands on going and having discussions with people yeah. traveling all around the world and I still really like the idea of that but now mm. I want it to be more funny sort of like a 
um somebody feed phil type of thing right yeah can, like i don't know have like a vehicle of like food or comedy and just like talk yeah, to yeah, people yeah, in a absolutely way. but i still want it to be very like exploring different cultures and different people so that's kind of an end goal but anyway so we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves i went to college graduated a year ago from right now may 2021 okay and i thought that I would just start like applying to jobs in that realm like I thought that I was I saw myself I really was interested in like late night tv I thought I'd get a start like I'd work my way up to being a correspondent like at the daily show and that way if I did well enough maybe in 10 years I could get my own show or something did you want to apply to jobs in New York and move to New York like when did you know you were gonna move to New York I knew when I got the podcast at Betches which happened Ah. in like September okay so okay so we'll get to that because I would imagine yeah, yeah, you yeah. know there was a little the there was like yeah. three months that really everything changed yeah. very drastically okay. but I did like the idea of going I thought after college I've been in California my entire life mm-hmm. even though like NorCal feels like a different state yeah I had been there I thought maybe I'll move to like but it wasn't New York I was thinking like New York or Boston or Chicago yeah. or like Austin like I'll go somewhere different yeah so then um I'm applying to jobs I'm just starting to apply June 2021 okay and TikTok exists and I made a couple TikTok videos before at that point but like hadn't gone viral I hadn't yeah. like this is so much more recent than I thought I know so this recent. is very recent it's I just feel like I've recent. seen you on TikTok for a long time yeah thank you I, I feel like it's been yeah. forever too but I just realized like today it's been like 11 months 10 months that's yeah that crazy. is it's not crazy. but yeah. yeah it's happened fast so I in June I remember the day too it was like June 10th or something it was that it was the week of yeah. June 10th and I went to a party at my cousin's house. She was in, she was a freshman in college. So I went to chaperone her party. Oh and my God. <laughs> she had like a party without her parents home. And I went to like watch it. Oh my God. And somebody at the party was like, oh my God, I know you from TikTok. I'm like that. Really? Like, like I, I, I have like 9,000 followers or something. Like I went, I got like 10 K likes on a video yeah. once like a year ago. She goes, no, no, no. And she pulls up a video that I posted that day without thinking like I was just talking and I ranted about something yeah and the video was already at like 300,000 likes oh whoa wow and I couldn't believe it so by the time I got home that night I was at like 30,000 followers and I had it was just Holy climbing shit. really quickly so I was like okay like I'll just keep posting this type of content yeah like, me talking to the camera ranting about random shit that I hated yeah like, it, people found it really funny <laughs> what, do you remember we what you were it. ranting about in that specific, <laughs> that video? specific video I said here are things that I hate and I think okay yeah really this liked. is what you were talking about in the Uber here yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the yeah, series that really started it yeah. like and that's what I'm known for but it really transformed into like me having an opinion I just want to yeah. like say I'm, I'm a hater before I am anything I'm a hater before I'm a feminist we I'm a hater before I'm a democrat I'm a hater before, a hater. A hater before <laughs> anything else about me that is right. important like I am opinionated and I don't care about like my negative opinions. I need to and express it's that. Yeah, funny. That's great. It's not that fucking serious. I it's feel like to really not yeah. sometimes. And there's this whole yeah. thing on the internet of things being taken. Like there's no nuance anymore. Everything is so serious. Everything yeah. is yeah. so black and white. I literally was just, um, we were talking about this the other day too. I did an interview with podcast magazine and the guy was like, that was doing the interview with me. He was like, um, yeah so like what's like the moral behind gin and toxic or is there like a lesson to be taught? And I was like, honestly, no yeah there's not like some like some episodes yeah like we did an episode on anxiety right. recently and that's like a more like a learning episode but like it's an entertainment show you right. watch it for entertainment you right. watch it for a good laugh not everything needs to have that's a why i love TikTok, TikTok. and that's why i really loved your videos like that like i mean when she met you on updating like i knew who you were like yeah I loved exactly your content and just like those videos were just like that's the like, conversations me and you would have at a bar yeah, like right but what do we hate today like right. you know like, yeah, that's exactly. why i love what's it. going wrong right. today i don't it's the way that people talk hear, off camera yeah exactly it's, i don't always want to fucking have like positivity shoved no. down my throat exactly and not everything has to signify something either like, yeah yeah i'll make comments about i've said this a zillion times because it's like the most annoying thing to me i'll make a con a comment about a female artist or like something then i'm a misogynist i'll make a yeah. comment about oh anything. my god <laughs> like, it's everything is so deep and so read into and for sometimes it's for good reason but other other times it's just like it's you need to be able to just say you don't like something and yeah. that's fine so that's what the video was exactly and that got to like three million likes or something like really wow. quickly so that started the growth okay and that was the first time I went like super viral so I just thought okay I'll just keep making these videos yeah. but at the same time I was still applying to jobs like I wanted to be I was looking into jobs like being a PA like I thought yeah, I you were like really this might start. not be a career no absolutely yeah. not I still thought that I would do like I'm gonna work at a media company a marketing agency something like this right like like, just like creative but like not really just something where I could work and have a job yeah and then on the side maybe I'll try YouTube maybe I'll try stand-up whatever yeah I didn't think that this was the start 
Yeah. And it just became the start. And it wasn't for like a month that I was like, wait, I think I can monetize. I think that I can take this seriously. Yeah. That I don't even have to apply for jobs anymore. Mm. Maybe this is the new like stand up. Maybe this is the new. That's how nuts I that it only took you like a month That's to realize so that though. Because we like, quick. we talked a, lo- a little bit about on the show yesterday. I started YouTube in 2011. Mm. So I had a very like, my experience of blowing up on social media was a very steady over time right, growth. Gradual. I didn't like, I very had like a gradual. few. Yeah, very gradual. And I didn't still have like gradual a yeah, exactly. Still gradual. I didn't have like a viral video or something that like blew me up. So it's just so crazy to That's me. That's the hearing. difference with TikTok. Well, yeah, Hot exactly. Cake. But now that people is the are most like sustainable day and way. Night. That is the most sustainable way. It is. Like, it is you but need there are times like I take Axel Weber for instance. Just brought him up on the show yesterday. Yeah. Too. Seems like yep. a great kid. Whatever. There's nothing wrong with him. It's just he blew up overnight. He mm-hmm. was the talk of the town two weeks yeah when you get that big that quickly those numbers in two days yeah it's great but then do you ever hear him brought up in conversation anymore and there's yeah, a lot of people exactly. like that he will be fine i'm not saying that his career is over by any means it's just no, beginning exactly. but you to have a big peak like that right at the beginning that goes so far yeah and then you can't really you can't reach grow that from again there you yeah. won't ever have growth that rapid again and i'm saying that about myself too like i am part of that problem but it wasn't in a day yeah I, I just learned today, actually, and the big thing to me was like steadiness and like yeah. I wanted to, I didn't want to have one viral video. That was the big fear and then never go viral again and just be living right, off of that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I needed to keep diversifying the content and like mm-hmm. make, yeah. have that tone that people liked about the first one, but about different things, not just yeah. the things I hate. And yeah. I just search, somebody like asked me how I got into this whole thing. So I searched my own name the other day and I did like most liked, like I looked at the top liked videos so and yeah. show them like here's what went viral. And I realized I have 10 videos that have hit 1 million likes, which was mm. like what I, I'm really excited. Oh, I saw you posted this on your Instagram story yes. literally right before you came right before here. I came yeah. Here. I just realized this. 10 videos and these videos were over the course of exactly 10 months. And it was like, oh, I that's, have. That's great. Like a I viral video per month, myself. basically. A viral video per month. So I've maintained this like sort of, I'm not saying that I will have growth like millions ever again in my life. Yeah. But to have maintained still, the it shows virality, consistency. consistency like I didn't just go viral one time and then never do it yeah. again yeah that was important to me was to maintain that so that's what happened but then you know I you can't just even if, you can have a million followers and like monetize just off of that but I'm not the type of person who wanted to rely on like hopefully I book a brand deal every single month like it yeah. kind of freaked me out so I liked the idea of getting a consistent job still yeah so mm-hmm. somebody approached me from doing things media mm-hmm. they are one of these like they started off sort of like a meme um I don't, there's a specific word for types of media companies like this like meme page companies yeah isn't that <laughs> like what fuck jerry did it's a lot yeah like that. okay yes yeah. and they um wanted to start a new snapchat show like a buzz pop culture celebrity right. show basically like they feed me topics Ew. on like yeah. the kardashians or whatever yeah, and i update it. people on it and it's not like the biggest part of what i do i don't think it's like the best i still think the best showcase of like what I think my talent is and what my voice is is my TikTok. Yeah. But the show was consistent money and it yeah. allowed me a place to like brush up my hosting skills, be creative, of kind course, of just like yeah. talk in a really quick way. Mm-hmm. And now I do that three times a week. So that was consistent money. And yeah. then Betches, we yeah. I made a connection there and I had this co-host that I was already friends with. And they were like, we want to give you guys like sort of a Gen Z podcast. Yeah. So when they told me about that and they said they wanted me to come in and do it in person, which is here two blocks away by yeah. Flatiron, um, I thought, great, this is like an excuse to get out of California and I'll yeah. move. And so I had the money at that point and I had the fan base and I moved and we did a season of the podcast, but my co-host had to leave, unfortunately, because she has did a full-time Did she job. already live in New York or did she, she also already live? She lives in Okay, Brooklyn. that's good. So I moved for the podcast, which is so funny because I, mo- I moved for the podcast, which I thought would be the biggest deal. Like, yeah. the podcast would be the center of my career. I thought so. Right. But it wound up being, like, just one of these things that I do. And I care yeah. about it a lot. But it was like the least important thing. Like, the I mean, least, that happens. Yeah. Like, you know, it, I, I found with social here, media. Yeah, like... It goes in waves. I, like right. I've had passion projects before too, where I think it's going to be this huge thing, and then it ends up not being. But then you find something else. Like right. I think that's a good thing about like 
you know doing social media and being this like social media influencer too is that you kind of have that like flexibility that like you could give something a go and if it doesn't work out you could give something else a go and you know all that stuff i've done so many yeah it's the random fucking things yeah before this media. yeah before this podcast i had a different podcast didn't really work out right. and everything and you so, think everything's a big deal and it's just like, everything is so it's fleeting yeah. and it's just you have to figure out it what gets fits. you to the next thing right you need to figure out like you to the next thing right you yeah, it yeah. takes time to like kind of figure out like your niche and what you're right. good at and what you really want to do and all that stuff I mean it took right. me like forever until I finally was like you know what like podcasting is definitely my thing because I used to be a beauty guru that's what I was <laughs> I don't know how which now I could uh, never now is, even right. picture her yeah be that. further that's from so what I am right but you know what it kind of that though did help me find my niche because I started over time to realize like you know what I am a beauty guru fashion person whatever People are watching my videos, but I start to realize it's like they're not watching my videos for the beauty or the fashion. They're watching it for the personality. They, that's what everybody's and watching for. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you're talking about at exactly. the end of the day. Look at like Emma Chamberlain. Like how did she get famous? She wasn't just talking like vlogging, about yeah. anything specific. It was never yeah, beauty. It was never lifestyle. Shit. She was literally she just, laying in bed complaining. Right? Yeah. Just yeah. Driving <laughs> around YouTube. in the car like ordering McDonald's. It's yeah. just, why is this interesting? People yeah. and older people will joke like, oh, the kids today, they just watch somebody like order food and like they do nothing. It's like, no, no this is, it's it. not about what relatable too it's entertainment yeah. coming from a voice that you like and understand so yeah. it doesn't matter what you're doing but that's what like took off and so the podcast like that led me to another thing and that helped me like figure out okay this is my voice on mic like on, on not on camera but yeah. on a podcast and like you have to figure out what people like about you on the podcast we talked a lot about like mundane shit just like our childhoods and like you yeah. know whatever like people would write in and ask us to touch on certain topics but it was like I felt like we were just talking about how was your week at the end of the day like that's what it was it yeah was two girls it doesn't matter what you're talking about yeah. if people yeah, like exactly you and they think yes. you're funny and two girls shooting the shit and just yeah. saying like here's what I did this week and I would be in the studio and feel self-conscious like this is boring like, nobody's going they're going to comment that they didn't want to hear about this it's going to be embarrassing they're going to be like who cares and then yeah. it'll be their favorite episode. it was always their favorite segment yeah. was when we would just yeah. talk about life yeah yeah I think we they totally love to hear an honest opinion and like someone who's not trying so hard to cater to so many different voices like you right. just talk as though you're talking without a microphone yeah. talk as though the way that people actually talk that's why people podcasts love it too. yeah because like I always say like podcasts are just so easy to listen to and like you just love listening to conversations and one thing about the internet is that everybody loves being in other people's business whether right. it's you know what you ate that morning yeah. for breakfast or the most detrimental part of your life like right. it does not matter right. like one of my favorite podcasts of all time is Girls Gotta Eat yeah. and I literally just like throw them on every Monday morning and I'm just even if they're talking about like some stupid shit or things that don't even apply to me it's just you like to be you like to listen you like to feel like you're part of the conversation it's like a girl's group chat that's yeah it literally is a girl's group chat yeah yeah Um, Yeah. your TikTok is great because it's like what I would send to my friends in a group chat like yeah. you know what I mean and, but exactly. it's just like you put it on the internet and people fucking eat that's it up that's the best possible yeah. com- compliment yeah. you could get on like yeah. what you do like I to feel like people feel like I'm their friend yeah and it is like the annoying that's one of the downsides which I'm sure we'll talk about yeah like, I was actually just gonna say yeah. you could start talking about that too because the next thing on here that we were gonna bring up is like what you feel cons. is yeah the pros and the cons of like this right. internet fame and all especially that, since so. it happens so I the reason I really wanted to have tiktokers on the show is because I am personally fascinated by the like ov- not overnight but like mm-hmm. I mean one I mean, month pra- for you. basically like, right. it the feels like overnight I'm overnight sure. blow up and like what that you know comes with because it wasn't a gradual build you didn't have a chance to really grasp being recognized in public right and all right that. and yeah. I I just feel like I would I would like really be grateful for it but I would also struggle with it and be like what the fuck is going on like yeah it's, so the pros and cons I guess if you want to start with the cons because yeah. we're haters <laughs> absolutely we can start with the cons yeah. I mean I feel that people rely on me to have something to talk about in order to entertain them the way that they rely on yep. TV. But the difference is that there's writers on TV and they sit and they, they're they paid to come up with some content. Yeah. They form a fake storyline and it's not damaging anybody else in their lives. Like it's all fiction. Yeah. For me, I'm pressured to talk about my real life, my real relationships, have something real going on in my life that people will find entertaining Mm. and produce it in an entertaining way, edit it and post it 
every single day. Yeah. It's like having my own TV show run by me, starring me. About your real life. About, yeah, my, about my real life, life and my real friendships and experiences. And minimum, 100,000 people will watch it every single day. Yeah. And you so, know what? Also adding on to that too, I feel like when you're doing that too, like, you know, being on social media and our social media personas are just us, people over time some people from the audience start to feel entitled to know every part of your life. Oh my God. Oh yeah. That was, my yeah. God. Like yes. they Absolutely. want to know everything about your life. And when you try to keep things private, sometimes people can't respect that. I had, right. that was like a huge issue in my relationship with the guy that I did that was famous. Cause like right. we tried to keep our relationship very low key. And we have said multiple times that, like, we want to keep it low key. We don't really want to, like, no, put cares. our entire. Yeah, they do nobody not cares. give a fuck. They, they were digging to find any little thing. And it's right. like, if I'm putting almost like 95% of my life on the internet, like, right. let there's me not have a, the 5%. Yeah, let please. me have my 5%. Let me have the 5%. Yeah, but a lot of people, I think, kind of like the audience sometimes could blur the lines between that and they feel right. like because they feel so connected to you they feel like they have like a right to know and they really like nobody do. has a right to know anything but then like, you, you come back and you try to say this and the argument is like but we're getting you paid like we gave you a platform yeah, like you do like, yes, owe them and I am for watching yeah. you 95 it is of your life. commitment to yeah. my life that is keeping me going at the same time it's causing me like severe burnout and anxiety and uh, yeah an inability to live a private life the burnout is probably the biggest issue for me it is, is oh my gosh i went through like no the past month actually up until like this week i went through like a huge burnout me period too. where i just like wasn't like doing anything i was because well, we open have so my much laptop, personal like, stuff going on that yeah. like yeah we did have a lot of personal, so much personal shit, yeah. stuff going on right. this year and like having to turn it on every week i mean the podcast we love it and right. it's like an escape it's an outlet stuff, yeah but it's still like when you have this shit going on that i can't even yet talk about on the podcast it's like oh my right. god like no, yeah. you have to like get in a different headspace you have that. to get in a completely different mood yeah. to quote unquote be yourself on right camera. but yeah. right. yourself right now like like my whole thing is that i i don't even talk about like a subject it's not about beauty it's not there's no thing that i'm focusing right. on yeah right. i the my Just whole talking. shtick is me talking about me and my feelings yeah. and making yeah. it funny but my life. Mm. So, and I know you talk about your dating life. Quite I talk a bit about my dating TikTok, life too which, all yeah. the time, which is good. But then, but then, it's like, what if I don't want to talk about that anymore? Do you think I can get yeah. a boyfriend with this kind of thing going on? Like, yeah, it's, it's just like yeah. I can't. Oh my god, I, mean? I always think. I always think. I'm like, you know what though? My thing is, I always think that okay, guys are gonna see Jenna toxic. They're gonna think it's like the biggest red flag. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, because the right no, guy will want not. The think right guy will not have that a it's a red flag. They're gonna think right guy is hard to come by. Right, exactly. Or you have, you have clout chaser guys, which is a really big problem. Yeah, oh, that's a really that. bad one too. Have you had any guys that like you've talking like negatively about on your TikTok mm -hmm. or on your podcast before, like confront you about it? Yes, absolutely. Really? Well, I always use the nicknames as you guys Not do. Always. Yeah. But I learned my lesson the hard way. I never ever include any identifying information and yeah. I never put their face in it. But I learned this. The first time I had talked about dating before and people love to see me like go on the dates. But yeah. the first time that I ever had a guy's face in it. And now I won't even put like his forearm. I yeah, won't right, give him right, any reason right. to say that he's in the video. But this guy's face was in it. And he like he begged me to be in the video. Like he really, really wanted a part of it. And no other information was given about who he was. I mean, or what was it? Just was. like a TikTok video? Yeah, it was a TikTok video. It was, okay. about, it was about analyst guy. You remember this? I did I this whole know. series where I went on a date with this guy who was a financial I analyst. I feel like I okay. kind of remember. And it, went, yeah. it wound up going really viral. I did not expect it. His whole thing is like, well, it went viral. And now I'm like, I, like, I didn't know. I don't know what's going to go viral. Yeah. But he asked. I told him ahead of time. I've had an issue in the past with guys asking me to delete the video. This is the first time I've even put a guy's face partially in the video. Yeah. You need to tell me within like 24 hours if this starts to blow up. You need to tell me if you want me to take it down. Yeah. After that, it's my property. Yeah. I will not take it down because at the end of the day, the video being up is monetization. It's money. It's dollars. Yeah. So I can't take it down. He says, great. Leave it up. Yeah. And before that, even like the reason before I had shown his face, people knew who he was because he would tell people. He would send the video to his family and say, this is about this me. Is me. This is about me. Yeah. So then now, and the guys that I do this with now who I, whose faces I never show, if their friends and family are finding out, if they're watching as though they're listening to him, they know it's him. Yeah. That's because he told them. It's yeah. not my fault. So I don't want to give them any excuse for him to say like, 
I made him I put him in a bad spotlight yeah because it's his fault if people know it's him he can keep it anonymous yeah anyway analyst guy was a great guy never did really anything wrong but uh, I said at the very end like oh, he like fumbled this date like he wasn't that great yeah. about planning the date he didn't <laughs> cheat on me he didn't do anything wrong it was just like he yeah I, I was sick of it like I he fucked up a little bit yeah. and I was like oh whatever yeah you're like whatever so it happens I said on the, the on the tiktok I was like oh analyst guy like you know fucking up the date whatever I just didn't make him sound amazing yeah <laughs> I didn't make him sound, didn't make him sound horrible yeah and he texts me and he's like hey my family everyone saw it and they know it's me I'm like the reason they know it's you is because you told them you yeah that it was you I never and said I was gonna keep it 100% nice when I talked yeah. about you and said you were funny and cute and amazing and great in bed you had no problem with people yeah. knowing that it was you and you told everybody so all that I ask from future guys, A, it's on me partially. I never, ever, ever mention anything about them. I don't put any piece of their body, their voice, nothing goes in the video. Yeah. But that way, if they are talked about with a code name, the only people who know it's about them are the people that they tell. So yeah. it's their fault. And then if they go and fuck me over and I need to keep the narrative going, the people are watching a TV show. It's a story. Right. Exactly. Right. I can't just not finish it. Exactly. So I have, if he fucks me over, which they usually do because they're men, then I have to tell the ending of the story. Of yeah. course. You can't get mad at me because you told everybody it was about you. Yeah. So that's how it is with guys. But that's like, nah, I wouldn't even consider that the major con. The major con yeah. about like sharing my real life is that people DM me and they don't say like, how would you approach an actress in real life? You'd say, I love your work. Yeah. You're talented. I like oh what you God. do. I like the role that yeah. you play. But I don't know you. I know the role that you are. Yeah. People approach me if they're fans of me, like in public or on my DMs. And they say, I love you. You would love me because I know everything about you. And I know your personality. I know who you are. Therefore, I know that you would like me. And we need to get drinks. And to me, that's like, it's you don't know me. Aggressive. It really bugs me. Actually, you know what's... I think that in a recent uh, Girls Gotta Eat episode, Ashley was talking about this exact situation of girls DMing her being like, and she's like, it's nice because like I want nice. them to feel connected to me. Right. But kind of like, if it, like you want to reply and you want to say like, oh my God, thanks for supporting me or like, you know, something like that. But you, it, see, it puts you then in an uncomfortable situation because are you just going to say no? And it's like, it doesn't have anything to really do with them. It's just like, they're like, hey, I love you. Let's get a drink well, then sometimes. if you do it with one and you're fan. Like, yeah, you do it with one fan. You're going to yeah. do it with all you the others. You have to do it with everybody else. And then in general too, it's like, yeah, like I love that you support me. Like, I'm not saying that we wouldn't get along, but like, you know, maybe you can't fit that into your schedule or right. you don't know them personally. So you don't just yeah. want to like, you, like you were saying, they know everything about you, but right. you don't know anything about them. Except I don't know like their anything name. about them. And like they think they know everything about me, but yeah, they but don't. You, but you so don't, don't even they know don't. the first. Yeah. And if you know like the last guy I went on a date with, great. But you don't know no. like who I am to the core. Also, a lot yeah. of the guys yeah. I go on the dates with are fake. They don't exist. Yeah. I like literally make them up sometimes because like, really? I need content. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I guess now like we were talking about the cons and whatnot. So like with dating, like do you see yourself continuing to really openly post about your dating life? Yes, I think that my whole philosophy with like dating, even before this happened, like the one of the first videos I made that ever did pretty well, but it did it did not start my growth at all. Like I consider going viral and starting my career on TikTok to have happened way after this video. Mm. I made a video this time last year that got posted on Call Her Daddy. And it was really? me talking about how I don't believe in posting a man on my Instagram because I'm the star of my Instagram. It's my fantasy world. Period. I've worked hard oh to curate. Oh my God, I love that. Period. <laughs> I've curated this Instagram account. It's like very much representative of like, you know, I'm the fun single girl yeah. and I don't want anybody to like Maybe like at the end flow. of a photo dump, but that's exactly. it. Yeah. <laughs> there are, and people think, oh, you, one day you'll post like, yeah, I probably will post a guy. Yeah, but it'll he's not going to be in the star a of the show. show. Yeah. yeah. Maybe on my story. My whole Instagram is not going to be I, You will yeah. never see a post like 10 slides dedicated to a guy and be like happy, happy anniversary baby. my world my world my oh. my world emoji like no my world absolutely is myself, not. Yeah. yeah i am my the world, world. Revolves around me i like it when my also how embarrassing
embarrassing when you break up because you're gonna you're 23 okay. i literally so i finally like i would post my ex-boyfriend on my instagram stories and mm-hmm. stuff nothing really like corny at all just like stupid videos of us right whatever it didn't even look like we were in a relationship because we were just yeah, like, having just fun like when we were all out i finally decided after like all this time of dating it was his birthday was rolling around and i was like so in love and i was like i'm gonna make an instagram post and also okay. like i never really posted my boyfriend of four years like only on like little special occasions but that also was because i wasn't allowed to but right. like it was a whole thing but anyways posted the man in feed on his birthday this was in december yeah in december <laughs> happy birthday love you blah blah blah, blah. broke up a month later yep nope archived it everyone was like what the fuck they happened know too they know when you archive yeah it. it's i'm just like of course like and look, it was almost like a bad omen like, exactly <laughs> i consider dating right now at this time in my life i have a big philosophy on dating and a lot of people interpret it as like i'm anti falling in love i'm absolutely not i believe it is very possible to find a guy who is very um good for you and helps you become your best self and i do think that i'm young i have no desire to get married anytime soon but i'm not saying that i'm like not dating to marry i'm not saying that i'm dating strictly to marry saying i think it's very like when people fall in love in their 20s in their early 20s i believe that it's love i'm not saying it's all illegitimate yeah but i have a philosophy where i think that the number one the main character of my life at this time is me Mm -hmm. i'm so focused on my career my growth as a person and as in my career like I need to be I cannot be distracted by anyone and I don't Uh have time to be confused or spend a month crying in the talking phase and like be in this like weird limbo of like does he love me does he not I can't be heartbroken right now yeah if I'm going to be with a guy he needs to really enhance my life and that's it yeah I will not make compromises if I reach my career goal, say I say I like win an Emmy when I'm 30. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, like I'm kind of like, I can slow down. I'm not on this grind anymore. Yeah. Then I'll compromise. Then I'll be like, okay, he's not perfect. And I'll take some time and really like think about, you know, I'll, I'll put in the emotional work and <laughs> have like emotional losses in order to find that person. Yeah. Right. But if I'm going to have a boyfriend now, he needs to be so fucking good. Yeah. That he yeah. is better than being single in your 20s. And there are a few yeah. things that are better than that. Yeah. So yeah. You're I'm just down. saying too, when we recorded with uh, Andrea, life coach, um, you were saying, you were like, I feel like a boyfriend at this point would in our in lives way. would get in the way. Also, really it's get like, in the way. are you 23? 23. Okay. okay. I, we're 22. 22. About to be 23. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, my thing is like, like, I started when I was 19 and now I'm 22. I'm a completely different person. Right. And now I'm 22. By the time I'm 25, I will also be a completely, a completely different, different person. So what person. would be the point of me You're getting a boyfriend right now? You're changing so much. much. Yeah. And I believe that it's possible to have a boyfriend during these changes, but he yeah. has to be helping you change. He, has he also, also has to be, be changing. growing. Also changing changing too. Too. If yeah. he stays you, the same and I'm changing, exactly. it's it's not going to I think the most dangerous thing that you can do in your 20s is have a boyfriend who is your best friend and only friend who oh you gosh. spend all yep. of your time with yeah. and you consider to be the center of your life. It is truly, truly crucial that you yeah. don't do this. Yeah. If you're listening to this, like I will watch my friends who are 22, 23, so beautiful also. Like, they're, we're right. so fucking, don't tell me we're not the hottest we'll ever fucking be. Like, yeah. Right. We yeah. look good. We're like perky and young. And yeah, we can yeah. be hot when we're in our 30s and 40s too, but our bodies won't be like, we of won't course. be able to stay up all night. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 we're yeah. at this point where we're like, at our peak physically and mentally yeah. yeah we're so free even our jobs like i'm so blessed that i don't have a nine to five like i have all this free time right i can have so much fun and i see my friends in the same boat and i see them advancing so much in their career and then i see them get distracted and yeah like, with these they fucking men. cry over <laughs> these guys and it's like okay fine cry over like i'm down to cry right now over like a 30 year old like really accomplished guy yeah. Yeah. sweet smart guy who like has his finances and his career in check and knows what he's doing and is like fully in love with yeah. me care and ready himself. to support yeah. me. but like most but men our age loser at 22 no. like some guy who's like still having his rent paid by his parents and you're crying over this like you're yeah. too fucking young and hot yeah. yeah you can cry over a guy when you're 30 but like exactly. now you don't have time and yeah. i shouldn't say i shouldn't put an age on it i should say you should cry over a guy when you are at a point where you have the time to slow down yeah, yeah. but right now you don't so no. like i don't see the point and coming back to social media if i'm gonna post a guy if i'm gonna share with the world that i'm in a relationship honestly i'm not if i'm in a great relationship He'll probably stay secret. He'll probably stay private. Yeah. I like, I also have like a 
weird habit of like dating celebrities like date, dating guys <laughs> i have a weird yeah. thing where i like With to date guys who are, yeah not yeah. even like a platform but like who are experienced in my field i yeah. love comedians I'm very drawn to people who work love in the comedians. entertainment industry, <laughs> specifically in comedy. I like people who yeah. understand me. I love men in get, comedy, but they're all sluts. But like, they're I love all, them. They're, <laughs> and they're all so <laughs> fucked up in the head, too. Yeah. 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 I like, I need funny guys. I need guys who make me funnier. Oh, and I like guys God, yeah. who, they don't have to be comedians, but I like guys who like get my references, have seen the yeah. things, yep. watch the shows mm. that I've watched. Like They have to they be a creative get, of some sort. Yeah. When I explain to them my goals and like who I want to become, they know who I'm referencing. They yeah. get the exact person that I'm talking uh-huh. about. And like that person can help me. I've found that the guys that I've been drawn to are guys that have already reached the goals that I'm trying to reach. Yeah. And guys who can sort of, I'm dating them because I like them, not for like career advice, but on the side can kind of but give still, me like mentorship. Yeah, they and have like to help you grow though. Encourage have like me. an intelligent conversation with them. They you need know? to yeah. be able to tell me like, it means a lot to me when a guy who is successful in my chosen field mm. tells me that I'm doing a good job yeah. that means a lot more than me to me than some guy who like is a football player and tells me yeah, that. Like, yeah. I'm like but you don't it of course it's a nice compliment if you say that I'm funny but like you don't get the way that I want to be funny yeah you don't get what a big accomplishment it is to do this that and the other and right. perform at this place or have this podcast yeah. but a guy who like it has been in my career path his validation means it, a lot it, more to it, you it hits yeah. harder like yeah. it's like oh you know that this is a big deal yeah you know what funny is so you calling me funny means yeah. so much more to me that's like obviously like a podcaster coming to us like a big podcaster and being right. like your podcast is fucking hilarious right. i would be yeah. like like I that would hit home literally you know? literally a million people on the internet can find yeah me funny. literally exactly. yeah. and it would mean more to me if chelsea handler called me funny yeah right like, uh-huh. one person. exactly yeah. i want it from a person that i respect yeah, yeah. so uh-huh. to date a guy who I who has interests and career passions and hobbies yeah. that I respect and that I want, like I want him to have qualities that uh, I, I want him to have a future and have qualities that I want for myself. Yeah, that's what I, I'm drawn. I never to. really thought about career shit with yeah. dating before. I, I, well, and I've I learned always, yeah, that like, I, like a nine to five guy is such a big disconnect for me because yeah. uh-huh. they just don't get don't what get I'm it. doing and you know they might find some things i do like cringe right. or like they just don't get it and if yeah. they don't a guy needs to respect your career it's like it's hard and i don't want to generalize but like men tend to only be able to empathize if they can like really put themselves in your shoes mm-hmm. yeah they have a harder time empathizing than women do and this is and hard to understand it's hard this, this, this whole career world, this entire really thing is hard yeah so like when, when i like, complain about my job to like the analyst guy for example he would like he would get it, but he would also be like, well, I was at the office from 6 a.m. to yeah. 11 p.m. And it's like, we both have hardships yeah. in our both careers just in hard. different ways. But then when I dated like this comedian guy, like he, what does he do all day? His podcasts and shit. But we have the exact same. Like writer's yeah. block yeah. We get burnout. the same yeah. problems and yeah. he gets the same exact, like we complained about the same type of people coming to us and annoying us. And like, the, you know what I yeah. mean? Like he understands that he's also not going to like, as a man who already has trouble empathizing with women, he's already going to have that step ahead by like, he, I'm in his shoes so he can understand my complaints. Right, yeah. right. And respect them. All right, so we're going to kind of wrap up, but I guess the yeah. last question would be, what do you kind of see is like next for you? Like, I know you have the pod, you're working on podcast stuff and whatnot, sure. but what do you kind of see happening for you this year? I think this year it's tough. Like I I see, I really like where my life is at right now. As Mm. I was saying, like I have this great luxury of being 23 and being able to like cover my finances and support myself Mm -hmm. by like not working all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that's rare and cool. And I'm like trying to savor that. So I wanted like a good year or two of like being an influencer. And now it's wrapping up year one. So I'd like another year of like, Focusing mostly on doing the internet stuff, making mm-hmm. TikToks, getting a really steady new podcast going because now I don't have a co-host anymore and um, trying new internet projects that I'm working on with the Snapchat people. Yeah. And with I have this new talk show on um, TikTok called Just the Tips and it's like a sex and dating advice show. So I'm oh trying to grow that. But that's like my internet stuff. But I think long term, like in the next two years, three years, the goal is to transition from being primarily an internet personality and an influencer into like television. Traditional always, media. I was going to say see acting. You. I see you. Doing. Absolutely. Like in yeah. a sitcom or something. Thank like, you yeah, so you would much. Be great that would be my sitcom. dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was raised on. Or like, reality. Listen, I could see myself doing a reality yeah. type thing. I think that I always like to do. 
I want to maintain a presence on the internet because I'm not denying that this is the future. Like, yeah. I really do think that what you guys are doing here, what I'm doing on TikTok, like, this is the future of entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. However, I'm not in the camp that believes that TV is dying. I will always have a special respect no, for TV. I don't, I don't know. No, I don't think TV is dying. I think some TV, like right. the things that people used to like, but like, especially like reality TV, sitcoms are never going to go away. Everybody right. needs a good binge Stre- watch. And maybe it'll all be like, streaming, but yeah. it's all going to be oh, long. It will. Yeah. Oh yeah, streaming. Yeah, but that's Long form fine. content and series, I don't think are ever going to go away. No, I don't no, think no, all no, media no. is going to be on my phone. No. I still want to, I think long term, not long term, but like in the next year, I want to write a show or I want to like be yeah. I, I'm still people like there's a misconception I have to remind myself too when I get too caught up in the whole entertainment and like the influencer stuff um the internet stuff I'm like oh shit like I'm not reaching these influencer milestones like I, I want to get to 1.2 million I want I want to like get, oh my god I gave up on that shit me so too, me too. long and ago. I have to remind myself I'm like whoa, 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 whoa wait like I don't want to be one of these people mm-hmm. I still I got into this for a reason I wanted yeah. to be in late night television or I wanted to write a tv show I wanted to like be in some sort of I don't know like I grew up on like Seinfeld and like Curb and watching the yeah. Bear Report yeah. like, these like that's the type of like late night and like sitcom type humor that I like yeah and that's I exactly want it to be in either you in. like Curb yeah. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Some type of, like the Larry David type of humor like, yeah thank you, you are like yeah, the yeah. female young Larry David stop <laughs> stop you're gonna make your cry don't do, <laughs> no, don't do this don't do this I have another podcast I, I can't ruin my makeup <laughs> don't <laughs> make me sob <laughs> that was no. a, that is the nicest thing you could ever possibly no say you really like I feel like if Larry David was young and had a TikTok he would also be saying things he hates like, yeah. <laughs> like, they they would. So it's my dream it's my literal dream yeah. and i know i like i have certain um connections like networking connections to larry because we his kids went to my Start high school making those like, moves there are ways wow. and not, not in a professional sense all i want all mm-hmm. i want a is for him to have seen my tiktok <laughs> yeah. like, that's right. all i don't even need to hear that he saw it i just need to know on some level yeah. that he saw it. that <laughs> maybe his daughter's scrolling or something or somebody's near him is and he sees the tiktok and goes ah, huh like right, that's yeah. all. That's <laughs> all chuckle, I want. One, one chuckle, chuckle from Larry one David. Chuckle. I could literally lie here, dig my own grave, and die. Yeah. If he said, yeah. "Oh, that was a good video. Like that was kind of funny." <laughs> I would literally just fucking <laughs> die. So that's He's all I want. Brilliant. He's everything to me. But that or like you know i was really into colbert growing up i was really into like i loved late night tv and talk shows and political satire and stuff me too so that's like all i want to do and i keep reminding myself like you don't care about being an influencer you're still in this for those original reasons yeah this is just your vehicle of getting to those places yeah Yeah. so i think i'll put my own spin on those things i won't be traditional and maybe i won't like host the daily show i don't think that's what i want anymore yeah but like my goals have changed but the whole gist and like the whole general genre that I want to be in is has remained the same since I was like 12 like it's my humor has always been the same yeah and the people that I respect the people I told you that I liked when I was 13 I've liked the same people yeah Yeah. like I've never changed in terms of what I like so yeah like the goal would be I want to write something I want to get into tv and I think that I've like chosen the right people around me who are going to help me do that. So I see it being like, I, I think I'm on the right track. Amazing. But I, as long as I like keep my blinders on. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Yeah. Oh my God. Cool. Yay. Well, thank well, you yeah, so much. Yeah, thank you so for much for on. being Thanks, here. This guys. Was awesome. So I, awesome. I wish we talked more. Next time we have to talk about like our toxic. Oh, you'll court. absolutely yeah. come back on. Because as soon as I saw 100%. this girl on stage, and the first thing she says to this guy is like, I need a guy who knows how to make me come. And like, blah, yep. blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, this is my type of girl. Like, yeah. I, said, I was crazy. like, I need a man that's. What I say, a man that's loyal, loyal and can fuck, loyal yeah. and can fuck, loyal something and can fuck. I said, yeah, I mean, yeah. loyal, successful and can fuck or something. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, fucking was in there. Yeah. When you I mean, when you lie. start your new podcast, we'll do like a collab. Please, situation. we'll do yeah. a switch. We'll totally we'll do, do a little switch. switch. That'd yeah. be great. Nice little crossover. But and yeah, we'll hang I mean, I'm sure everybody watching this knows who you are. But plug yourself, anyways, where they could find you, all that fun yeah. stuff. I'm Talia. My full name. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, how do you also known, name? Also known as the new Larry David Vance. Yeah. You heard it here first, bitch. Um, I, my name is Talia Lickstein. You can spell my last name L-I-C-H-T-S-T-E-I-N. It's like a tough one. Um, and that's my <laughs> handle on like everything in t- Twitter yeah, and amazing. Instagram and TikTok and whatever. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being thank you, here. Thank you, you guys. Oh, yeah, you'll 100% come back on. Let us know when you start your podcast. We'll do a little crossover. Thanks. Yeah. 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 I love you guys. Love you too. Mwah. Mwah. Hey. Hi. Uh, so Talia had to run. So unfortunately, she couldn't do the outro with us, but it's fine because we're she just killed it. She fucking killed it. She was. I, 
I love her. She was I mean, a, the two two guests in a row that we so had. Good. Three guests. Andrea fucking killed it. Sophia killed it. Yeah. Talia killed it. I mean, if you guys remember when we had Caitlyn Ray on, I mean, still to this day, she's like definitely. I mean, we've only had a few guests on, but like of all the guests, I was like yeah. the biggest fan of Caitlyn prior. But like, I I love Talia, and I've watched her yeah. content for since she blew up pretty much. Like me and my sister both love her and send her videos back and forth. So it's just like. It's so cool, like, that we get to interview people yeah. that we, like, admire and love. And, like, I, I just think it's so sick. And, like, yeah. her being as cool in person was just, like... Yeah. She, <laughs> like, all the guests that we've had so far, like, they've come into the room and the energy just, like, went to 100. Like, yeah. you know, we've been great. And by the way, guys, obviously, if there's, like, a particular guest that you want to see come on Gin and Toxic, New York DM based. us, spam them, say, get your ass on Gin and Toxic. We'll reach yeah. out. We'll set something up. We, uh... Yeah, we're really excited for, you know, we're going to have a lot of really great guests on uh, this summer. This episode, I believe, is going up on the 18th or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, maybe after oh, that. I don't wow, know. I forgot. Weird. I, yeah. know, I know. This is, yeah, this, when you guys, so right now it is May 5th, but I believe when you guys are listening to this, it will be, oh no, it'll be May 25th. I was going to say, it's past Not the, the 18th. 18th. 18th is Sophia. May 25th is going to no, be this 18th episode. No, 18th is solo. You're right, Sophia. 18 is solo next week. Oh my god, guys, I'm <laughs> I'm crazy right now. Anyways, though, no, yeah, let's that was awesome. wrap it up with a little toxic confession. Obviously, like me and Lily said, this is our third episode recording in literally 24 hours. So we're like a little dry on toxic confessions, I'm not gonna lie. But I did get this like funny ass. What did I just do? Oh, oops. I got this funny ass DM from this girl. And she said it's a toxic confession and a virginity story. And I was like, oh boy, like what the hell could this be? Yeah. And she sent me like a whole spiel. But long story short, this girl said that she, so she explains to me that like she was never like a believer in saving her virginity for anybody special. Like that just like wasn't her thing. So she said that her toxic, right. You were the same. So was I. Yeah. So, yeah, so this girl says that, you know, she's never really been a believer in saving her virginity for anybody special. That's just, like, not her thing. Mm -hmm. So her toxic confession was that she decided to go to a party, got tipsy, and hooked up with a random guy in a bush. (laughs) That's how she lost her virginity. And she follows it up by saying, I swear to God, I've never been so cold. My favorite part of this toxic confession is right after Christina read it to me earlier, and I go, oh, my God, that's so funny. Wait. I think I hooked up with a guy in a bush one time. We didn't fuck, but I did suck a guy's dick in a bush one time. And Christina goes, oh my God, me too. Yeah, I also did suck a guy. And I, I was literally, just like, great. I told great. her this is, well, no, I was, uh, yeah, I, when Lily said that, I was just like, yeah, like I also did suck a guy's dick once in a bush. And of course. Yeah. That's what we do. That's what we, we do. We I be was sucking dick. We sucking As di- Lily said. Never forget. Never forget <laughs> Lily saying, I be sucking dick in high school. Yeah. <laughs> sucking dick Clearly in high school. Clearly I was. I mean, like. I feel like that was like the thing. I feel like not a lot of people were like fucking in high school, at least in my high school, but no. everyone was sucking dick. Yeah, I. Nobody was eating pussy though. When I was 15. Not a soul was eating pussy, but oh. everyone was sucking dick. What's up with that? What is up with I'd that? I'd like to change. I'd like to do something about that. Is that still the same? Wait, what's going know. on, guys? The high school G T fans need to. Let I want to know what the drama is. I think we've we've pushed out a lot of the high school audience. <laughs> yeah, we were like, "Fuck you, guys! You're not fucking toxic enough." But the remain the, the, the high school audience. That's you know that's what not. I would love to hear. <laughs> what? What? No, I'm. Just oh curious no, no, no. What, you're what I would love to hear is what scandal did your high school have? Oh, mine, mine just had like too many to even. Well, I was just saying even in general, yeah. like to the fans, like yeah, if you yeah, guys yeah. had a high school scandal, like tell something us. that happened, please tell us. Do you have one? I have 10, babe. Yeah, I told I you about million. the girl shitting at the party already. That's right. And then I said there was this girl that uh, shit on her boyfriend's dick trying to do anal and she had to move schools because of it because everybody bullied her that hard over it. That actually my... <laughs> Oh no! What? Oh, fuck it! Fuck it! Oh guys. no! The guy I dated before Sammy, we dated when I was in high school and like my first semester of college. Like this was years ago, like four or five years ago. Um, he before we dated did anal with this girl and she and it ripped her asshole open. She had to go to the hospital, I guess. 
What? And she just told her parents and the doctors that she took a really big shit, I guess. <laughs> Um, oh my god yeah he ripped her asshole and and somehow i felt so bad because she was i mean honestly both of them like i felt bad for both of them that it got out because like that's just like oh god yeah and i would have changed schools 100 percent, but she didn't and she just wrote it out and i was just like go off go off queen (laughs) no we had a lot of we should do like a high school episode or some stupid you know what's funny is actually it's in emily but yeah emily um you guys we've talked about it on the show before she listens to the show uh my high school bestie she like sent me a voice memo or a text message like very recently saying that we should do a dedicated high school episode just like why not like i could just like do some digging and ask around like to like jog my memory about shit that happened because you know would be hilarious if like you got like oh my god guys i'm if so sorry about the sirens if we each got someone. from our hometown high school if i got emily and you got like sarah or kyle i'm still or voting someone. for our first boyfriends but oh yeah that too peter oh my god <laughs> well i mean my first, peter's like my Lily, first stop. boyfriend yeah my first boyfriend like ever was this guy christian but he wasn't my like first real boyfriend my first real boyfriend was uh the ginger never forget he does live in philly he's like not that far he could get here in an hour I'm going to fish town this weekend baby let's go <laughs> fuck it we're gonna bring him on the show but anyways <laughs> let's wrap up. that would be fun yeah you're like we need to go yeah i just want to sit and talk i know i can we like- do another episode <laughs> guys i don't oh, get to do this for a month <laughs> I'm actually really sad. Like, I love recording G&T so much. Even if I think I'm not in the mood to record, as soon as we start recording, I'm like, happy. I'm in it. This is my jam, babe. Well, I was thinking, like, I don't get while, to do this for a month. Yeah, I was thinking Fuck. while I'm in um, Italy that I was going to take, like, if something happens or I want to update voice them memos. on, like, I was going to take voice same, memos and then I'll we'll do be the able same. to. Yeah. And we'll like put it in mostly you, but like I'll do the same if I'm like on a night out and then we can kind of like catch each other up when we get back yeah. and put it in the episode. Maybe we even, you know what might be cool if we did like um in between the next few episodes if we did like if I'm able to upload it if the Wi-Fi is good, like a little like extra 10 20 minute episode that's just voice memos catching each other up. Oh my god! Like what we would send over text, like "Hey, Christina, yeah, yeah, yeah you're never yeah. gonna believe what I did last night." Exactly. Like, oh my god, that's like a, a great bonus idea. little like. I'm sure if it's like 15 minutes that you'd be able to upload it from there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're out of. We home might do it, guys. Wait, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. We're gonna have to brainstorm Cute. that on the way home. But, anyways, we're gonna wrap the episode up now because we have 10 minutes to pack up our equipment and get out of the studio. Sorry, guys, but it's a long episode anyway. So and yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell hope you guys everything. enjoyed. Yeah, she is everything um and we will see you guys well first of all go follow us at gin toxic podcast on twitter instagram and TikTok. i'm getting i'm getting a little sad tina i am getting a little sad too that's what i was gonna this say i will yeah we will well this is all i have for you guys we will see you next week but for us <laughs> we'll see you in like four weeks see you in a month see like, you in a month this is so weird but you know what? You hope you go. We have some really good episodes while you're gone, which will like. Yeah, these you know, are going to be some Wednesday, really heavy be, hitters, I'm so. excited for these to come out. So I think every Wednesday morning I'll still get like the good vibes and the GMC yeah. vibes. And oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. my God. I got to figure out the time zone difference thing so I can figure out when I got to post shit. You're ahead. So you'll be up. Oh, you're right. You, you don't. Have oh, to my God. Oh, that's going to be so easy because I think mm-hmm. by that point I'll be like like settling down exactly. getting ready for dinner it'll be like five or six yeah perfect all right all right well we love, love you guys. guys so much thank you so much for listening we will see you next week Bye. and i will see you in a month adios <laughs> and i will see you in a month <laughs>